previously we started discussing the various consequences that took place after the first world war now while we have seen the destruction and death caused by the war and also how multinational and century old empires turned into new and independent nations in this lecture we would be looking at the various other consequences we would be starting off by looking at the consequence which was the rise of new political ideologies over here we see benito mussolini and adolf hitler standing right next to each other benito mussolini would become the fascist leader of italy and hitler would become the nazi leader of germany well if their mention has not already made you understand what political ideologies we will be discussing we will be discussing about totalitarian and dictatorial ideologies and these regimes which took place or came up in europe after the first world war so we saw how empires are replaced by independent nations and people are electing into power democratic governments and putting all their faith in them however almost all post war democracies which rose up had weak corrupt and inefficient governments people got frustrated after all they were the ones who had brought these governments into power entire europe was facing the effects of war in this period and these governments could do nothing to appease the needs of the people the best example would be the weimar republic in germany who were not able to do anything about the unemployment crisis people were also angry at these governments for accepting the unfair terms of the treaty of versailles in the first place and felt a more iron will leader would have never done the same the people were already suffering and they were already angry at these terms and they were still recovering from the losses of their loved ones who died in the war the anger started building up and this found an expression through aggressive sentiments dictators and tyrants who felt the anger and aggression in people decided to use this to rise up in popularity they managed to target the anger on certain communities and also decided to not act according to the terms of the treaty This defiance though being a crime was perceived as a display of strength by the civilians and they brought these leaders to prominence. The rise of these new political ideologies led to the rise of Nazism in Germany under Adolf Hitler and fascism in Italy under Benito Mussolini. These ideologies soon took up power in these countries and very soon these ideologies would lead the way into paving the Second World War. Moving on to another outcome or consequence of the first world war was the fact that it caused the second world war as well and this particular blame of causing the second world war from the ashes of the first world war goes to the treaty of versailles a treaty of versailles was supposed to be the peace treaty which ended the first world war and brought prosperity to the entire world however the treaty of versailles was an incredibly unfair treaty it was imposed upon germany Do you remember what the important terms of the Treaty of Versailles were? Let us review it quickly. So the main terms of the Treaty of Versailles that were imposed on Germany by the Allied nations were the following. First was the blame of the war. Germany had to accept full responsibility for the war. They were blamed for the entirety of the war. They were the prime culprits. Then comes the arm limitations. So Germany was forbidden to possess tanks, warplanes, artilleries and even submarines and their army had to be limited therefore they could only have an army of just about 100000 men and could only have about 6 battleships in their navy moving on they also had to pay war damages or reparations so they were supposed to pay the insane sum of 6.6 billion pounds as war damages and finally there was also a lot of territorial cession or rearrangements of territory where we see that germany in total lost 13% of its entire land holding this included 15% of their farming lands 10% of their industries and all 100% of its colonial interests which were the overseas colonies germany had at the same time apart from losing land perhaps more important to germany the loss was even more striking was that they had to part away with 6 million of its own citizens 6 million germans now had to live in foreign lands because these regions that went to the other countries also included germans living in them so this in a nutshell were all the important and major terms that were imposed on germany by the treaty of versailles Germany was humiliated and angry at these unfair terms of the Treaty of Versailles. They were looking for any attempt or any chance to get revenge. 
because they felt that the fact that they were not allowed to even negotiate these very terms that were applied on Germany and the fact that terms were so extreme that it could devastate Germany's economy and political structure, these all made the people aggravated. Now in this anger and discontent, they put the blame on the government. They put the blame on the Weimar Republic, which was the successor state of the German Empire, for even signing the very treaty and called them criminals. This affected the stability of the Weimar Republic as it lost all popular support. The people simply did not trust the Weimar Republic to lead them to a better future. And soon enough, in this anger and discontent, these people led the rise of fascist, totalitarian and dictatorial ideas and regimes, particularly Nazism, which rose up under Hitler. Hitler became incredibly popular in this period because he was vocal and always was against the unfair terms of the Treaty of Versailles. The Weimar government was also blamed of being incapable, corrupt and weak as it could not deal with the economic crisis which Germany had to face after the First World War. When Germany had to pay insane amounts of war reparations, the Weimar Republic thought that if they devalued their currency, they could easily pay the amount out. But by devaluing the currency to a drastic level, this led to the complete loss of value of the German currency and incredible amounts of inflation, which led to an economic crisis in Germany. People got further angry when the Weimar Republic could not do anything about this crisis and even were angrier as it was the Weimar Republic who could not negotiate the terms of a treaty and eventually caused this particular situation of Germany. All these reasons together led to the instability and decline of the Weimar government. The incapability of the Weimar government to negotiate the terms or to get Germany through its economic breakdown made people lose faith in the particular government and made them turn towards fascist Nazi party under Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler's rise to power was completely fueled by his disregard of the Treaty of Versailles. Now this disregard of the Treaty of Versailles was something the people loved. Therefore we see that Hitler therefore continued to outright disregard the treaty. And by doing this, he instead got public support by the people who were dissatisfied and who considered this particular treaty to be a diktat, to be an imposition. Now when the Allied nations felt that the treaty was too unfair for Germany, it already was too late. Nazi Germany already had gone too far by this point of time and there was no point of return. When the Treaty of Versailles was drafted, President Woodrow Wilson of USA had warned Prime Minister Clemenceau of France to not pursue a policy of revenge while drafting a peace treaty. But Clemenceau had ignored this particular warning. France would end up paying for ignoring this warning when the Second World War would break out. And the cause behind the breakout of the Second World War is also contributed to the rise of Nazi Germany, something which was a product of the discontentment towards the Treaty of Versailles. So in this satirical depiction, we can see how Hitler and Hitler's party itself is sneakily going past the terms of the Versailles Treaty. So it shows a cartoon depicting Hitler's disregard for the Treaty of Versailles. The disregard of the Treaty of Versailles was something which Hitler made a part of his political campaign. And his disregard is what gave him immense popular support and eventually led to his rise as a leader. Eventually, the Second World War broke out when Germany or Nazi Germany annexed the territories in Poland. Now this territory in particular was the area taken by the Allied nations from Germany and given to the newly independent nation of Poland. When Germany occupied this particular area and when Germany launched a full-scale occupation of Poland, this laid the seed of the Second World War. Therefore we can see how the unfair nature of the Treaty of Versailles and the incapability of the Allied nations to realize how unfair this treaty really was and how much of a bad condition the German people were in led to the Second World War where the people of Germany, discontented, aggravated and angry, brought to power the Nazi party, which eventually waged the Second World War. The next and the final consequence, and perhaps one of the most important consequences of the First World War, was the formation of the League of Nations. The League of Nations was envisioned to be an international organization which ensures world peace and promotes international cooperation. 
an organization which brings the world together and makes all nations respect each other's territorial integrity, sovereignty, and also settle disputes in a peaceful and judicious manner. Now, this particular organization came up as a response of all the devastation caused by the First World War. Now, before the First World War, there was no such international organization which could bring the world together and stop a conflict of that scale from happening. When the world learned its lesson, they decided to come up with the League of Nations. Let us look at the formation of the League of Nations itself. So the allies or the allied nations who won the war, they set up an organization called the League of Nations. This league was based on Wilson or President Woodrow Wilson's 14 points, as we will see later. The ideological base of the League of Nations came from President Woodrow Wilson's 14 points declaration, which was a declaration for the future of Europe and the world after the First World War. Now, the League of Nations had a court document, which is known as the Covenant. And the Covenant was drafted by the Allied Nations, and which was containing the rules and functions of the League of Nations. And this particular covenant also had an agreement in it which bound all the member nations to refrain from war, which was the primary purpose of the League of Nations to exist, to keep the countries away from war and to maintain and ensure world peace. Finally, on 10th January 1920, the League of Nations came into existence. This happened when the Covenant of the League of Nations that was drafted was added on to a Treaty of Versailles that was signed in the previous year in 1919. Automatically, all the members who signed the Treaty of Versailles now also were subscribing to the Covenant. And thus came the birth of the League of Nations. To provide a physical manifestation to the League of Nations, the League was headquartered at Geneva, which is in Switzerland. Now, can you answer this question? When did the League of Nations come into existence? Was it 10 January 1919, 10 June 1919, 10 January 1920, or is it 10 April 1919? The correct answer is 10 January 1920. Therefore, in this lecture, we continue the discussion regarding the consequences of the First World War by discussing the rise of new political ideologies that took place in Europe primarily, Nazism in Germany and Fascism in Italy. Then we saw how the Treaty of Versailles, a peace outcome of the First World War, eventually led to be the cause of the Second World War by being a seed of it. And finally, we saw the creation of a League of Nations. The League of Nations was an international organization which had the task of ensuring and maintaining world peace. Now we saw the formation of the League of Nations, but we still have to look at the aims, objectives and the various functions at the same time also the inner workings of the League and its future, which would be the content for our subsequent lectures. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.